Steve Kornacki is at the big board. Steve, this could be the single biggest night for any of these candidates, hoping to take advantage of Donald Trump's absence. So what are the numbers telling us? Yeah, Andrea, I mean, we've been seeing in all sorts of different polls that Donald Trump has an enormous lead in this Republican race. This is our new NBC News Des Moines Register poll of the all-important first-in-the-nation caucus state of Iowa. And here you see Trump's lead at 42 percent. DeSantis, the second, close, the, the second place, but distant at 19. No one else in double digits. So, you know, obviously you say Trump not there tonight. Who's got the biggest opportunity on paper to move up? Is there room here for one? One of these candidates to make this a race with Trump. And I think when you dig deeper into these numbers, you do see two candidates who have an obvious opportunity tonight. They are DeSantis and Tim Scott. And why? It's, it's not because they're close to Trump right now. They're not in the horse race, but it's because of this. Let me show you th what we did here. We asked folks in this poll not just who their first choice is. On the first choice, Trump's way ahead. We also asked them who their second choice would be. And then also running through all of the candidates running are these candidates. Tell me who you're actively considering. Maybe, maybe you're not voting for them yet, but they are under active consideration in your mind. And I think this is interesting because Trump, if you combine those three categories, does have the highest number at 63 percent. But look, DeSantis is almost equal with Trump there, 61 percent, and Tim Scott not far off at 53 percent. What you see in our poll here in Iowa and what you see in national polls and polls in other states as well is, not, is that Trump is ahead, but not DeSantis and Scott are not unpopular with Republicans. They have very high favorable numbers. And, and in Scott's case, very low negative numbers. And in DeSantis's case, pretty low negative numbers. There's broad goodwill towards DeSantis and towards Scott. So no Trump on the stage tonight. What these numbers suggest is there's obvious room for DeSantis and Scott to tap into that goodwill. Will one of them do it tonight and, and move up a little bit in Iowa and elsewhere? Steve Kornacki, that's such a great breakdown. Thanks for starting us off here because now we have NBC's Garrett Hake in Milwaukee for all of the excitement, joining us along with Charlie Sykes, editor at large of The Bulwark, and of course, also in Wisconsin. Garrett, tell us the latest on Governor Doug Burgum's condition with a leg injury. Is he going to be able to stand and be in the, in the debate tonight? We don't know, Andrea, and neither does his campaign. A source with the Bergam campaign telling NBC News that the governor's going to do the walkthrough this afternoon, usually the last chance, sometimes the first chance for candidates to get a lay of the land on the stage and then make a call about whether or not he thinks he can go through with this debate, which would obviously require him to stand at a podium for two hours or so. Uh, and they're going to try to make that decision this afternoon. In the meantime, his campaign is trying to make a little bit of light of this situation. They tweeted out a photo of a younger Doug Bergam playing basketball. Basketball. The governor is saying this is not the first time he's had a basketball injury, but it's the first, the first time he's ended up in the ER from a pickup game. Obviously, not being able to participate tonight would be a significant blow to this campaign, which has been trying to get attention, trying to get itself off the ground, had to use a, a sort of a creative way of uh, getting to the donor threshold to make the debate stage. They need the eyeballs tonight. They're going to want their man on that stage. Well, just to follow up there, I mean, <laughs> he, they ended up paying $20, I think, to get people to donate so that they reached that yeah, right. you know, 40,000 donor list, donor threshold. Yeah, that's right. I mean, here you have a candidate who's a multimillionaire many times over who would probably not be relying on outside donors at all were that donations not a requirement of making the campaign stage here. So in the Burgum campaign's case, they ran a public promotion essentially saying uh, for you know a one dollar donation, you'd get a twenty dollar gift card. They tied it to an inflation message and used that to help them get across the threshold in terms of donations. And we don't know whether we had to have surgery. We do not. He was released overnight, so I think that's highly oh, that's unlikely. Good. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's reassuring. So uh, let's also talk about Vivek Ramaswamy. He's hoping to keep his momentum going tonight, Garrett, but he's, he's making headlines for controversial comments about 9-11 when he seemed to be raising questions in an interview with The Atlantic about whether the attack was actually an inside job. Uh, here's the audio that, once he denied it, that The Atlantic released to prove that he actually said it. I think it is legitimate to say how many police, how many federal agents were on the planes that hit the Twin Towers. Like, I think we want it. Maybe the answer is zero. Probably is zero, for all I know, right? 
have no reason to think it was anything other than zero. But if we're doing a comprehensive assessment of what happened on 9-11, we have a 9-11 commission, absolutely that should be an answer the public knows the answer to. Well, if we're doing a January 6th commission, absolutely those should be questions that we should get to the bottom of. So, Garrett, you also had a chance to talk to Vivek Ramaswamy. Um, bring us up to date on that. Yeah, Andrea, these comments from Ramaswamy getting attention now is indicative of how quick his rise has been in conservative politics. I think you could think of him as kind of the Republican version of Pete Buttigieg from the last cycle, at least in terms of strategy, where he's tried to make himself omnipresent in conservative media. He holds a ton of events. And the more that you talk, the more likely you are to say something that can be used against you at a time in which it becomes useful to do so. So here you've got somebody who's been rising in the polls, who now is getting a ton more scrutiny on every everything he says, including those 9-11 comments, which he has been trying for the last several days to clean up in media appearances. Uh, but Ramaswamy is also someone who's almost completely unknown outside the kind of narrow conservative electorate that's been paying really close attention to this race. And so I asked him yesterday exactly how he would judge a victory or a good night on the stage here tonight. And here's what he told me. It's a good night. Good night is people introducing myself to the people of this country and people who, maybe, just maybe, some people actually able to pronounce my name. <laughs> It just gives you an idea of someone who, again, is rising very quickly in this field, but still has a lot of work to do to introduce himself and who I suspect is going to get a lot of attention tonight from the other candidates trying to knock him back down to size, Andrea. Now, I know you're only a visitor to Milwaukee, but Charlie is a resident. So, <laughs> Charlie, talk to us about Wisconsin and whom do you expect to maybe have a breakout moment with Republicans in Wisconsin? Well, first of all, it's very hot here in Wisconsin. It's going to hit 99 yeah. degrees. Um, uh, the problem with uh, eight candidates on the stage is they'll have about uh, 12 and a half minutes to have that breakout moment. Um, and, of course, uh, Donald Trump is not there. So I'm going to be watching uh, to see, um, you know, how effective uh, Chris Christie is, who is, the I, I think, the, uh, the ultimate political performance artist. Um, obviously, we're going to be watching Ron DeSantis. Is he going to be able to um, be human? Is he going to be able to be funny? Is he going to be able to be effective? Is he going to be able to turn his campaign around? I think that would be the biggest surprise of the night if, in fact, he was. Uh, and as Garrett said, um, I think there's going to be a lot of shots aimed at Vivek um, because he has been rising. Um, and for someone like Nikki Haley, it's kind of a risk-free um, way of using her stilettos to go after somebody who is uh, is not part of the mega cult of personality. So I think that you're going to see a lot of shots um, thrown at an absent Donald Trump. Um, obviously, uh, DeSantis uh, is going to be in a very vulnerable position, and I think you're going to see a lot of elbows thrown at Vivek. As far as Tim Scott, um, I just think uh, I put an asterisk there because I'm not sure that Tim Scott is running for president. I think that it's more likely that he's running for vice president, but this is a chance to uh, be above the fray and perhaps um, be the um, most likable or least um, unlikable candidate on that stage. Although he has repeatedly denied that in terms of uh, not running for president, of course, as one would. Uh, but Charlie also, you know, the former president has been saying that sparks will fly. That's what he put out on, on his social media. Uh, do Wisconsin Republicans want to hear them attacking each other? Are they, or are they concerned about issues or is it impossible to generalize? It's impossible to generalize. Look, I think people want want to show. I mean, look, um, you know, D Donald Trump showed his contempt for um, the Wisconsin Republican Party, uh, for the RNC, for Fox News, and for his rivals. Uh, but that's been his that's been his style since uh, since uh, 2015, um, and so far it has worked at him. He's insulted his way to two uh, two Republican nominations, and he thinks he can do it. But but again, what a what a surreal, extraordinary split screen of all of these candidates debating. Um, while tomorrow we'll be talking about Donald Trump's fourth perp walk, where he faces an additional 13 felony charges. We've never seen anything remotely like this.